and now a veteran of more than 10,000 interviews over the past 15 years from Day Trade Fun, Jay Ratliff. I'd like to welcome Jay Ratliff, president of Day Trade Fund, back to our show. Hi, Jay. How are you? Sally, doing great. Good. You know, last year when I interviewed you, mm -hmm. we talked about your background and we talked about day trading in general. Right. But I want to dive into the curriculum itself. Sure. How do most people learn how to day trade? Well, sadly, I mean, most of them, Sally, they, they try to learn on their own. Uh, they've got complete access to their portfolio. They're able to access it with just a few keystrokes. So they'll read a book on day trading or they'll read a series of books on day trading and they figure they're ready to go. Wow. Uh, they'll go to a weekend crash course seminar on day trading, which is aptly named, uh, and they're just unprepared and unfortunately uh, lose a lot of money. Yeah, I was going to say they have to lose a lot of money if they're not prepared. More than 95% of people that start day trading lose money. Wow. Uh, in fact, we've posted on our day trade fund website uh, the warning from the Security and Exchange Commission, the SEC, warning people about engaging the stock market. If you don't have a proven system when you trade, you're going to get creamed. You're going to lose money. And you have proven to be successful. How? Yes. Well, I spent years uh, just watching the market. Um, I was trying to study the market and I was watching stocks that channeled or rolled. They would drop to a certain point, and then over the course of time, they would come back up. And I would notice stocks that would do that every six months or so. And after a little bit more study, I saw stocks that would do that every three months, and then every month, every week, and then a couple of years later, I, I detected a repeatable pattern every day for some stocks. And that's what I was after, because the longer that your money is in the market, the more that it's exposed to considerable risk. Anything can happen. Um, if I use a stock in the morning for 15 minutes, uh, the amount of risk that my money's exposed to is very minimal, and that was what I was after. If I had to guess, I bet some people have a hard time believing oh, you've been successful. Absolutely. In fact, um, when they hear that I took a small cash portfolio of $25,000 and in the next 24 months made $350,000. Say that again. In 24 months, I yes. took a cash portfolio of $25,000 and generated three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in twenty four months. Wow. Now I didn't allow that to just keep growing. I just kept my cash portfolio at, the, at pretty much um, the same amount and I didn't use options. I didn't use margin. I simply I was buying and selling stocks and the skeptics when they hear that Sally they lose their minds. They're saying look there's no way but there is a way and, and we prove it every day myself and my students but look I can't blame them. Uh, after all Wall Street is the place where uh, companies tell make this much money, but they tell their investors they made this much money. Uh, you've got management uh, decisions being made that take Fortune 500 country, companies to bankruptcy. Uh, and you've got stocks that have a drug failure and they lose 70% of their value. So it's a rough place. And this is the place where people want to keep all their money for an extended period of time. Uh, <clears throat> no, thank you. Uh, I I'd prefer to do it another way. Do the skeptics bother you at all? They used to, but yeah. I just have fun with them now. Right. You know, when, when I say that I took twenty-five grand, generated three hundred fifty thousand dollars, they say it can't be done, and they say, "Well, you've got to have a lot more money to be that successful." Well, then I took a thousand-dollar portfolio for ninety days, didn't trade with any more than a thousand dollars, and generated eighty-two hundred dollars in wow. ninety days, just to show them. You don't need a lot of money to be successful at day trading. Um, in fact, we're, we're working on something right now that when we release it, uh, I think we're going to have to have medical teams standing by <laughs> because they are literally going to uh, pass out. It's going, it'll be down the road when we can release it, but it's going to be a lot of fun. But, you know, anytime I mention the specifics of my success, we receive emails from the Better Business Bureau and all the consumer protection agencies basically saying, now, Jay, if you're going to go around spouting the, this amount of money you're making, we need documentation. So and you have it. We do. And yeah. anytime they send yeah. a request in, we give them mountains of paperwork and they respond saying, uh, you have more than enough documentation to justify what you're saying. But, you know, students are skeptical uh, as well, but, you know, they check me out. I've got students that have a background in military intelligence. Mm. I've got students that are former attorney generals and law enforcement. So. They put me through a vetting process uh, uh, long before they enroll. So, you know, I, I'm used to it and it doesn't bother me. You train the students for 12 months. I do. Mm -hmm. 
Does it take that long? Oh, no. Now, in fact, most of the students are trading livestock between six and eight weeks. We spend the balance of their training introducing them to some enhanced trading skills and reinforcing what they learn. But no, after a couple of months, they're in the market and trading uh, livestock. And you know what I love? The um, You're teaching them online. Oh, yeah. All well, the learning's online. We have to. Yeah. I, I mean, we have students that we train from all over the country. They all have individual schedules. Uh, some watch the stock markets in the morning, some in the afternoon. It, it, their schedules are hectic. So the training is designed to fit with that because, you know, we have business owners. We have people that manage uh, their own business. We've got students, stay-at-home spouses uh, that want to train. And, you know, some of them will say, Jay, I want to use the market in the morning. 7.30 until 9.30, that's the time I can watch it. That's pre-market. Some say, no, nah, I want to watch the market during the regular session. You know, ding, 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 you know, from 9.30 until 4. And we've got some that say, I prefer to watch it in the evening from 4 until 8 o'clock. So that's the beauty of the, uh, of the program is we take their schedule, we craft the training around it, and they're allowed to train as their schedule allows. And I know you have people from all over the world mm -hmm interested in learning mm -hmm. from you. What makes you so popular, do you think, and what you're teaching well, them? Sally, I think honestly that people recognize that I don't have a typical day trading approach. I'm not a person who advocates looking for one stock and hitting a grand slam and doubling your money with some of these outrageous claims. That kind of approach makes you a fortune on one stock and then you lose money on the next 15. Uh, my course is an exchange specific, time specific approach uh, to using the stock market unlike anything before. Uh, my goal when I approach a stock is to use it quickly, um, to generate an uh, amount of cash earning 5 to 10 percent. Others are looking for that one stock a month to, to make all this money. Look, I, I just want one or two stocks out of the 25,000 that trade every day that we can use for a quick profit. In fact, uh, this week we had one stock that we liked and we used it four different times in one day at four different entry prices. We made collectively 20% on that stock. Now, now get this, you've got a person that owns that stock long term, they've mm -hmm. had it for years. They ended the day pretty much where they began. We used their stock four times, made 20%, and our money's not exposed to risk. We were done trading, I think, by 12, 31 o'clock that day. It was a blast. In fact, yesterday, we had one stock that we bought at $34 a share, sold it at $36 a share. So we made about 6%. Over not a, not oh, a bad day. Well, it was, four, just it was over 14 minutes. Yeah. And then that same stock dropped. We used it, bought it again at $30 a share, sold it at 32 within six minutes, made another five point whatever percent. And uh, in fact, I held that stock those two times for 20 minutes and I made $700. Wow. So when you look at trying to minimize your risk, you use the stocks for uh, you know as little, little time as you can. Um, and we've got very specific entry and exit points uh, for all of our stocks. And we treat New York Stock Exchange stocks one way. We trade, treat over-the-counters a different way. And we've got a different approach for each. But it's a, it's a very clearly defined checklist that tells us exactly when to buy and then exactly when to sell. That's why we can grab a stock at $30 a share and know we're going to sell it at 32 And then six, months, six minutes later, uh, we've sold the stock and we're out of the position. Your success is amazing, but one thing I love what you teach, mm -hmm. one section is on mistakes, and that is probably a very <laughs> right. important well, section. Well, it's, it's day trading mistakes. It's one of the, the 25 sessions that we have, and it's where I try to teach people the mistakes that I made over the course of watching the market for well, 20 years now. And the idea is that I want to shorten their learning curve by teaching them the mistakes I made so that they can avoid those mistakes and make money. I've got one student, in fact, on the way to the studio today, sent me an email saying, Jay, my year-to-date success rate for this year, and we're ending up, what, at the end of the third quarter now, or first quarter, he's 91.3 percent of success. Wow. In other words, he's right 91.3 percent of the time. Now, when I was Picking the right stock. Picking the right stock. In other words, he makes money 91.3 percent of the time. That's amazing. And my goal was always to shoot for, you know, 70, 75 percent. But I've got some very intelligent students, and they just go crazy. And, but when they learn from what I've done, Sally, they can generate a lot of money. And, you know, he's a stay-at-home dad, and it's just, it works out great. Coming from a great teacher, though, you've well, got to give yourself it, credit it, the, there, the, Jay. The, the students are the ones that yeah. make it happen. Yeah. Um, 
How do you teach your students when it comes to the portfolio? Okay. Do you have a small portfolio, large portfolio? Most of them portfolio? start with a small. small. In fact, they'll start with like $2,000 and they'll fund their portfolio as they go. Some just let their profits build as they go through the year. They'll add some more money so that by the end of the year they've got a, a much larger uh, portfolio. Um, so, I mean, that's you can begin with any amount you want. Most of them start with a small amount and that's really all we need. Then do they move up to a larger one? They do. In fact, some students, it grows and it grows and it grows, and we actually had to produce a session for students that train with, trade with more than $75,000 in their portfolio. Wow. You know, if you've got a $20,000 portfolio, mm -hmm. you don't use all that on one stock. So you might put $5,000 on one security, and, and it goes up 10%. You walk away with a $500 profit in a course of a few minutes. But if you've got an $80,000 portfolio, you might put $20,000 on a security. You make 10% on that, you walk away with $2,000 in a period of a few minutes. We've got some students that begin their day at 9.30 and they are finished by 10 o'clock in the morning making $1,000 or $2,000 a day. So, and they go play golf, they spend the rest of the day. Sometimes they'll make money through the month and once they reach a certain level, they just take the rest of the month off because to them it allows, it's a vehicle that allows them to do other things with their life. So, it's great. Yeah, we have a great time doing what we do. And one portion of your training is dedicated to pre and after yes. market mm -hmm. trading? Yeah, and for some, that's that's an ideal time because they may be a business owner where they can watch the market from 7 until 9.30. Uh, that's what their preference is. Or they want to watch it after work from 4 o'clock uh, to 8 o'clock. Gotcha. Now, trading during uh, these hours, it's slightly different than the normal regular session of 9.30 to 4. And we teach our students how they should... Uh, trade in that particular time. In fact, last week we had a stock that students began tracking. I think it was about 5.30 they noticed it. It hit our specific spot and then it went up. And our students made between two and three thousand dollars on that stock in 15 minutes. Now I'm a conservative kind of guy. I jumped in. I only held it for 13 minutes but I walked away with sixteen hundred dollars in 13 minutes. So yeah. That's a lucky 13 right it there. Was. It That's was. That's a lucky yeah, But the idea is we get the money into the market and we get it out of the market quickly and then uh, you know, go do something else with the rest of our day. You have session recaps. Yes. Tell yeah, me that, about that. Yeah, that. That's at the end of the trading session. Um, I will send out a session recap which basically uh, reviews the activity of the day. Uh, I include stocks that we use for profits, stocks that we chose not to use and why. And every day there's teachable items uh, that I can go through to kind of reinforce some of the past things that we've covered. Um, and it allows me to increase my training uh, quite well. Students love it. In fact, uh, the session recap emails right now are probably the favorite part of the student's training. They use that and they compare their notes versus what they did for the day versus what my notes are and it kind of helps them measure their progress as far as how they're doing. But uh, yeah, we send them out at the end of every day, normally one or two o'clock, they go out and they might be like this long and cover four or five stocks that we use for gains and I send it by one o'clock so they know it's time to stop buying stocks. Let's, let's go home. Yeah. And you know what else I love uh, about your program? You can train and trade mm -hmm. anywhere in the world. Oh, Doesn't that, matter. That's the beauty of it. I mean, yeah. not only can you work whatever hours you want, on whatever days you want, but you can work from wherever you want as well. And, and that's what I love. In fact, the last two weeks of December, one of our students was in Hawaii on vacation. So he gets up, he trades through the morning, a couple hours, and then goes spends the rest of the day on the beach. He made $5,000 in two weeks. He pretty much paid for the bulk of his vacation for the two weeks he and his wife were in Hawaii. I've got a student that loves to scuba dive. Occasionally I'll get an email, dink in the morning, saying, Jay, I bought this stock for a profit, this stock for a profit, I'm done, 40 minutes later, I'm gonna go scuba dive the rest of the day, um, which is the fun side. But you know, we've got a serious side too, that I had a student that lost his son in a, in a tragic accident uh, several months ago, and he sent me a very long email saying, Jay, I wanna thank you because I had to go I think his son was 21 years old. I had to go to another state for several weeks to be with my son's family. And I could take my business with me. And he said, no other job I've ever had would allow me to be portable enough to go where I needed to be for as long as I needed to be. And w when I get emails like that, I'm thinking, yeah, this program is being used exactly the way I want. I had another student that uh, traded for one to two hours a morning, 
from his mother's um, hospital room during her final days so that he could spend time with her. He was where he needed to be. But the beauty was he was able to take his laptop, trade for a couple of hours, make a considerable amount of money, and then put his business away and focus on his mom. And when you can help people do those kinds of things, I mean, Sally, who cares how much money we make? Absolutely. That's what really counts. Absolutely. All of this started for you mm -hmm. inside a motel room. A motel room. Room 121 at the Travel Lodge, Dayton International Airport. I took a computer that anytime you hit enter, it'd take like 40 seconds to, to load. It was on a dial-up modem. And when I moved into that place, I thought I'd be there for a few months at most. Um, and it took a lot longer than I thought. But, you know, during those years of sacrifice, uh, I knew that I could find a way to make Wall Street work for me. And I just was not going to give up until I found a way that I could use Wall Street um, as a business. And, you know, yeah. It took 10 years. Smarter people it would have taken a lot less. But for me, it was 10 years. Still have the key. I, I saw your yes, key. I it. think it's neat. I think that's yeah. great that, that you still have it, too. Mm -hmm. One sex section of your curriculum mm -hmm. is perfection is overrated. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Do you think perfection is overrated? Yes. Okay. I do. Well, the Because everyone tries to be exactly. so darn perfect. Exactly. And no one can be perfect. No, they can't. And in day trading, that's the same thing. They figure, Jay, the only way you're going to make money is if you buy the stock at the absolute low price and sell it at the absolute high price. And you have to do that all the time. And I'm thinking, where do you get these ideas? Right. For us, our goal is a 10% gain on a specific stock. And it, as a secret here, it, if the stock drops 2 or 3% below where I bought it, mm -hmm. no big deal. Instead of a 10% gain, I'll bring that back to a 7 or 8% gain. So I'm still making money. I wasn't perfect. Who cares? I still walk away with a profit for a stock that I used in a short period of time. So yes, perfection is overrated. I know people ask you all the time, why don't you write a book? I was asked to do that. Um, late 2006, I just finished working on a book project with Marlo Thomas. Uh, it was the book entitled The Right Words at the Right Time. It was a great work. And I was given the chance to write a book. Um, and I said, no, thank you. I mean, the reason being, there's no way physically to contain everything that goes on on Wall Street in a book. Uh, it just wasn't possible. There, there's so much to learn, and it takes a considerable amount of time to learn. I mean, our students spend time learning how to spot, track, and then engage stocks uh, that are undergoing a stock split, specifically when to buy, when to sell. We spend time studying companies that have earnings reports. You know, can we use these or not? If so, when do we buy, when do we sell? Uh, they've got these uh, exchange-traded funds that uh, have come out. They're a lot like mutual funds. We can day trade those under specific circumstances. Students need to learn how to make that happen. Um, we have companies that are being delisted where they're getting kicked off the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. How do you engage those? How do you approach a stock that has dividends? Um, how do you approach a stock that's a warrant, which is a stock that has an expiration date that literally goes to zero dollars? Um, so we teach all this to our students, including how to anticipate if a stock's about to be halted as far as the trading, which is not a good thing. Uh, and there's a lot of factors that students have to learn and you simply can't contain all of that in a book. So, yeah, I can make a lot of money, but uh, Sally, that's not the most effective way to teach, which is why we use Wall Street as our classroom. I know some people may be watching us and they may say, well, let me think about this. Mm -hmm. Let me give it a month, you know, and that turns into six months. Well, yeah. But you have always said now is. is the time to learn. Yeah, not 10 years ago, not 15 yeah. years ago. Because the next 15, well, probably the next 20 to 30 years, Sally, um, from a financial perspective, it's going to be a lot different than the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, we have issues of skyrocketing debt around the world. We've got issues of terrorism. We've got a slowing global economy right now. We've got this love affair with stimulus programs, not only here in the United States, but around the, the world to kind of prop up artificially um, the stock market and economy. And the challenges that we have waiting in front of us, there's a lot of landmines. And it's not going to be like what we've had over the last 20 or 30 years. Now, I'm not saying to anyone that they should discard their strategic strategies as far as investing. That's not the case. But I just want to emphasize that we can't look at history now to tell us what's going to happen in the future because we're dealing with a whole new series of dynamics that we've not had before. So, um, yeah, so I, 
I don't look at the history to tell me what's going to happen in the future, or the past rather, because we're looking at something right now where it's going to be uh, a lot different. And you want your students to look at this as a business. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is not some hobby. This is a business. We're using Wall Street uh, as a business. Um, and that's the way that we t teach our students. Now, it's not a typical business. We don't have customers. We don't have employees. We don't have inventory or any of those other headaches. But it's a very specific approach uh, and a very serious one. And we teach students, hey, to make a lot of money, we have to approach this as a business. And as they start making the money, it's pretty easy for them to understand why. I have grown up investing in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And I know I've asked you this question. Uh, what is the difference between investing in the stock market and day trading? Well, investing is the long-term, you know, buy, hold, and pray approach is what I call it. Uh, as we're with us trading stocks, we just do it on a daily, short-term basis. We're looking for a few percentage points profit in a matter of a few minutes, and then we get our money out. And our money's exposed to risk for short spans of time. Now, if your money's in the market for long periods of time, it's subject to risk 24-7. I mean, anything could happen. If there's some domestic or international situation that happens, uh, the, the market could drop by 10 or 20 percent, and it could take a considerable amount of time for that portfolio to go back up. We don't have to worry about that because by 12, 1, 2 o'clock, we don't know the thing, and we're just waiting for the next opening bill at 930 to see which stocks are going crazy for us. So if someone has more questions or they want to apply, mm -hmm. How do they do it? Well, first of all, they don't need me to learn how to day trade. I disagree. Well, no, I mean, there's people out there that learn on their own. If you watch the market long enough, you can start to see some of these repeatable patterns. So I always tell people, yes, I mean, if a general manager from Northwest Airlines with no financial training or schooling can make the stock market work, anybody can. But if they want to reach me, the website is daytradefun.com. Most people just Google J. Ratloff, stock guy, you know, whatever, and it comes up easy enough and they can find us. And our classes tend to fill up about four or five months in advance, and most of those are from student referrals. So it, it, it's nice, and it's, yeah, it's, I love doing it, Sally. But what I like, though, is having you buy each student's side. Mm-hmm. Well, we are, in fact. Yeah, what I mean, because we are talking money. We are. After and all. And what happens is during the course of training, you say, gee, I like this stock. I like it at this point. And I might say, Sally, I like that stock too, but I prefer it at mm. this price. And, and we, we explain why. And then we, you and I watch that stock together over the course of the next 15, 20 minutes. You might say, how in the world do you know is going to do that? And then I say, here are some of the indicators that we look at that suggest this is what's going to happen with this particular stock. Uh, the stock that I, we used the other day that we were waiting for to hit $30 a share, people said, Jay, we used this stock earlier from 34 to 30. It's not coming down to 30. I was like, just wait. And sure enough, it did, and we were able to use the stock again. And finally, if I was a student, I would want my teacher to be passionate. I wouldn't want the teacher just to be teaching me to make money. And, and you, you talk about some of our college professors that were boring, that you just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly, well, I mean, exactly. I, but you're passionate about well, this. Well, this is a life changer. I mean, when you're talking about something, we, we have a world now where people that gave their, their professional lives to a company retire. They're enjoying their retirement. The company makes stupid decisions and say, I'm sorry, we have to cut your benefits. What are these people going to do? Go work at, at, at a fast food restaurant or something? Sally, that's criminal. So here you don't have to worry about, am I going to outlive my savings? Now it's a matter of, let me use this money so that I can continually use the stock market that's been around for 200 and some years. It's going to outlive me. So yeah, for the rest of my life, as long as I've got a sound mind, I'm going to be using the stock market because it's the greatest job in the world. It's a good day at the office. 30-minute 30 day, 30 minute days. You can go play golf the rest of the day. It's a lot of fun. One more time. Where do we find you? Daytradefund.com. Daytradefund.com. Mm -hmm. Jay Ratlett, thank you very much. Sally, my pleasure. Investing in securities involves risk, including the risk of loss. Investors may make or lose money. Past performance is no guarantee of future results, and nobody can guarantee what the market is going to do from day to day or minute to minute.